Hi everyone, this is John. I don't know about you, but I have been missing OpenStreets events. <laughs> I have not been to an OpenStreets event since 2019. And so I decided to go back into some of my old footage and look to some stuff that I haven't published yet. And so what this is, is a compilation of three events, uh, actually four events that I have not yet shared with you. So you get to see uh, Portland uh, OpenStreets event, uh, two different years, as well as Fort Collins, two different years, as well as uh, also Tucson uh, and thrown in there just a, a few little video montages from uh, the Fort Collins Tour de Fat event. So enjoy. Sunday Parkways because it's fun <laughs> and it's um, a great way to show people that they can get around and be out in the sunshine, walk and ride bikes and they don't have to be in their car to go someplace to have fun. It's just, it's all right here in your neighborhood. And you're frequent so, flyers. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We, we ride all of them we can and we love it. I think also because we get to see neighborhoods yeah. that we don't normally ride in. So we see all kinds of new parks and good ways to ride through areas that we haven't been in so it's a lot of fun and we run into friends and we run into friends yeah. and we make new <laughs> yeah. friends, and we make new friends. <laughs> yeah. wow. it's all good and your names again kathy kathy and i'm lauren, lauren. kathy yep. and lauren thank you so very much Appreciate certainly it. you bet yeah, yeah. Thank you. cheers okay So we are looking at Halsey Street, which is one of our major east-west thoroughfares coming from close into the city, you know, way out to the city's edge and beyond. And um, one of the things about the neighborhood that we're in, it has a historical transportation street pattern that isn't a well-connected grid. And so a lot of traffic relies on these big streets to move through. And Historically, these big streets, they haven't been friendly to bicycling and even sometimes to walking. And so what you're seeing here is the next round of improvements really designed to try to make these streets more friendly to the community and more multimodal. Um, more improvements are planned over time, both crossing improvements and um, improvements in terms of separating the bikeway. These are part of our big jump plan. Um, and they're, they're just it, making these roads more humane is critical to making the city more accessible. Uh, well, I'm Ian Studi. I work for the Portland Bureau of Transportation and Active Transportation and Safety. I am a program manager, and one of the programs that I manage is this right here, Sunday Parkways. Portland Sunday Parkways is an event where we close down roughly a six to eight mile loop of streets so that people can walk and bike and we connect them with somewhere between four and six parks along the way. And as you can see behind me, we have a, a big activity area for folks and it's all about getting people out in the street, having fun, connecting with their community. So in addition to the major streets and the types of Vision Zero improvements on our high crash corridor, in this area, as throughout the rest of the city, we have a very strong emphasis on creating what we call neighborhood greenways. And these are streets that show up on a map as uh, priority places for people to walk and bicycle. Um, often, we choose lower volume streets for these. Um, they're not the big arterials, they don't have protected bike lanes, it's really shared space. But of course in order to get uh, that shared space to a place where it's really comfortable for everyone to, to walk, bike and drive together in the same space, you have to keep the speeds low and you have to keep the volumes low. 
So we're, we're working through that. This is one of our uh, neighborhood greenways that we're looking at now. It's slated for some improvements. Um, the volumes are obviously low here. Speeds might be a little bit of an issue and, and often for neighborhood greenways we'll do things like speed bumps or even uh, curb extensions to slow traffic and just really send the message that all users belong here, that, that it's a place where you're slow, you, you move slowly and you expect people to be in your way. And one of the really exciting sets of developments around neighborhood greenways is how you deal with intersections. So there's intersections like this that are pretty much quiet street to quiet street. You might not need that much, or you might, as I talked about a little bit earlier, you might do some curb extensions, you might do some signage. But back when we crossed a couple of the major streets earlier, where greenways cross major streets is where you often need quite a bit of thought and investment to really make that crossing safe. And um, that ends up being really important to a greenway. If it's just a quiet street, but then you're stuck at, at a major street crossing, you haven't really created a place that's gonna draw people walking and bicycling any length through the city. Right. So real quickly as we're crossing Glisten uh, here, we can talk a little bit about this. this is also going to be... That's right. This is another of our Vision Zero High Crash Corridor. Mm -hmm. And this is another uh, roadway slated for protected bikeway improvements as we make the Vision Zero investment. The residential speed limit in a, throughout the state has been 25 miles an hour. But in our Vision Zero work, one of the things that has become very clear through best practices in other countries and research is that the faster people are moving, the more likely a crash that does happen will be a serious injury or fatal crash. Recognizing that getting that speed limit down throughout the city, including on residential streets, is critical, we went to the state legislature and got the authority to drop our residential speed limit from 25 to 20 miles an hour. Um, we need to post it and that's what those 20 miles an hour uh, street signs you see are. And then what we've done, and you can see one over there, we've really made a concerted effort to have a public awareness and information campaign around the 20 mile speed limit as well. And as we go along here, you can see some of these 20 is plenty signs. We printed one run of these and they were gone within weeks. People loved them, asked us for them. Um, we ran out and then we reprinted and did two more runs of them. We could keep handing those out indefinitely. People feel a lot of ownership around lowering the speed limit on their street. And they feel a lot of interest in sort of sharing the information that 20 is plenty. My name is Andy Bemis and I'm a bicycle planner for the city of Tucson and we're out here at Ciclovia en la Doce. This is an open streets event for people biking and walking to have fun, car free day on South 12th Avenue here on the south side of Tucson. This event's been going on for about seven years. We Twice a year we close down 
uh, a stretch of roads to cars and open it for people to enjoy themselves, to meet community, to get to know other parts of town, biking, walking, jogging, strolling. As you can see here, we got kids and families and uh, people cruising by on their bikes just to have a good time, be healthy, get to know Tucson, get to know your neighbors, get to know the good things we got going on here on a day of car-free streets. Yeah, well, of course, this is also our Big Jump Project focus area. So it's an area that we're really um, doing a, a big effort to try and increase awareness of bicycling and increase ridership here on the south side. So bringing this event here is uh, you know, a means for us to show the community how fun and enjoyable and easy it can be to get around by bicycle. My name is Emily Yetman. I'm the executive director of Living Streets Alliance. We're a local nonprofit here in Tucson that's working to make our streets better places for people. And we're out here today at Ciclo Via doing exactly that. Um, we've got people of all ages out on bikes, walking, sitting in lawn chairs, watching the day go by, and it's fabulous. There's music, there's food, we're supporting a lot of local businesses, having a great time. What we're finding is that like biking is universal and lots of times when you give people the option of riding they, they come out so we're seeing that today um, this is definitely a new route for us and something we were excited about trying and it's been really encouraging to see so many of the businesses that um, haven't been partners in the past uh, exploring this with us and coming out today I think they're gonna be really happy to see um, new customers. I think they're going to see new customers after today because there's so many people coming down from other parts of town. We are a membership-based program, so we're always looking for people to be members, and that that entails showing up. So we'll let you know when to come to council meetings and voice your support for something. Um, we've got tons of volunteer opportunities, obviously, to provide events like this. You can go to our website, livingstreetsalliance.org. I'm Stacy Sebacek. I'm with the Pace Bike Share. Yeah, so I live here in Fort Collins on the northwest uh, aspect of that, and we've seen a lot of bike improvements happen here um, uh, in the last few months, uh, most notably being the improvements on the entire Mulberry Corridor um, from Overland, which is where we live, um, all the way down to Shields, and that has actually changed the entire conversation around biking to school. Um, my kindergartner now is super stoked on, on riding to school because of the Mulberry improvements and it's just been a, a game changer for our family. Talk a little bit about this event and what this means for the community. Yeah, the open streets events have been getting more amazing every year. I think a lot of it is just be, the, the awareness is building around the fact that we can just come and play in our streets. Um, I'm loving the fact that we have such a huge road closure this year because I'm seeing families who live along this um, entire corridor just kind of walking around and, and wondering, or maybe they know what's going on, but they're participating in a way that I haven't seen um, in previous Open Streets events. So this is really special because the whole community can just come out and, um, and, and do what playful means to them. So we see a lot of bikes, we see a lot of walking, a lot of pop-up events, and the different hubs are really active this year. It's really fun to see people gathering around music and food and vendors, and there's a lot of smiles today.
Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a like, comment, and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. Also, I just launched my Active Town store, so for some cool Streets Are For People merch, click on the link in the video description. Cheers.